Hi friends and welcome. My name's Steve. In this video, we're going to continue exploring application startup in ASP.NET Core. In the last video, we looked at the program class and how we could use a web host builder to create a web host. In this video, we're going to look at the startup class, which provides a way to configure that web host. I'm here in my demo application, which I created by selecting the default API project template for ASP.NET Core. We're in the program class, which we explored in the previous video. One of the extension methods that I showed briefly in that last video was the use startup extension method. This is a generic method which accepts a type parameter, and this allows us to specify a class that contains additional application configuration. By calling use startup, we instruct the web host builder to use that class to define our services and a request pipeline. Service registration and pipeline building can be done with extension methods directly on the web host builder, but using the startup class is a convenient and recommended convention. Let's take a look at the default startup class. The first thing to notice here is that the structure of the startup class is defined by conventions rather than inheritance. Whilst there is an iStartup interface that we could derive from, that is rarely used directly. Instead, as long as the class follows standard method naming conventions, when ASP.NET Core wires it up, everything will work almost as if by magic. This startup class has a constructor accepting an iConfiguration object. This will be resolved and injected by dependency injection. It will include the configuration values loaded by the web host builder. It is stored in a read-only property on the startup class and can then be accessed by any of the methods in startup. To comply with the expected convention, the startup class must include at least the two methods shown here. There are variations on the exact signatures for those methods which could be used though. For now, let's focus on the default methods from the template. The first method is configure services, which accepts an I service collection. This will be injected by the dependency injection framework at runtime. The I service collection allows us to register any services that our application code depends on with the dependency injection framework. During application startup, a service provider will be built using this collection, which can then resolve and inject required dependencies into our classes, for example, into our MVC controllers. Here, an extension method called addMVC is being called. This extension method adds a number of the required services for ASP.NET Core MVC to the service collection. It's quite common for related service registrations to be grouped together in this way. The other method on this default startup class is the configure method. This method will allow us to set up the middleware pipeline, which then controls how our application will process HTTP requests. This method can also accept dependencies, which will again be injected via the dependency injection framework. Here, it is expecting an I application builder, which is used to build the middleware pipeline. It is also expecting an I hosting environment, which at runtime will provide details about how the application is currently being hosted. The first thing this method does is use that I hosting environment to check if the application is running in development. The environment is configurable using an environment variable called ASP.NET Core underscore environment. And when using Visual Studio to develop ASP.NET Core applications, this environment variable will be set to development by default when running the application locally. In this case, when we're in the development environment, a special piece of middleware is added to the pipeline. If an exception is thrown in our application, this piece of middleware will display a detailed error page to us, which includes things like the stack trace information to make debugging the problem easier. We would not want to display that sensitive information outside of our development environment. And so this conditional middleware pipeline can be really useful. Finally, the MVC middleware is registered via an extension method which the MVC library provides called use MVC. This will allow the MVC framework to process the incoming requests and generate the appropriate outgoing responses. In this video, we explored the conventions around the startup class and looked at how it can be used to register services for our application, as well as configuring the application middleware pipeline that will handle our HTTP requests. This was a very basic example, and in future videos we'll explore how we can add additional services and additional middleware to an application. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.